Hi, I'm Shannon from houseimprovements.com. In the video today, I just want to walk through some basics with uh, miter saws with you. I've got three examples here, uh, all my personal saws. Uh, none of them are new, as you can tell. Um, they're all, uh, I've got two different brands. Like I just use what, what I'm comfortable with and what I could afford at the time, I guess. So um, starting out with, this is kind of the most basic saw here. Uh, so it it's, will still miter, which means it'll the, this head turns side to side, and it will also bevel, which means this head will tilt. And on this saw, it only tilts one direction. Some saws will tilt both ways, bevel both ways. Okay, so kind of the most basic one. This one doesn't. This one just chops down, just chops down. It doesn't slide in and out to cut wider material. Okay, so that's kind of just your basic miter saw. And quite honestly, for most people's needs, this is gonna do what they need to do. This is a 10 inch, so it still cuts a reasonably wide uh, cut there. I, I'm not 100% not sure, but I think this one will cut like seven inches uh, width this, wise, this way. So 10 inch basic miter saw that bevels and, uh, and miters is really probably what most of you need. Now if you need something a little, little better than that, then you might go up to a saw like this. And the main feature with a saw like this that's different from the basic saw is that this allows me to cut a greater distance from the fence. This, this saw here is still a 10 inch blade, so it's still the same size blade but I'm able to cut at a, at a 90 degree cut. I'm probably, uh, without measuring, I probably can cut close to 12 inches. So, so that's kind of the major difference on this saw. Now this saw also, it, some of the uh, mechanical features are different, but this saw will also bevel both directions. So it will bevel this way, and it will also bevel that way. So a little bit different than that saw there. Okay, so that's the sliding miter saw. Okay, uh, then as we move over to this saw, again it has a, some different features as well from both of those. So this one is a 12 inch blade, okay, so a little bigger blade. Uh, this saw does extend out across the table, but it has a different mechanism back here. It's more of a hinge system as compared to the sliding bars that are on this one. This saw, this saw here needs a lot more distance behind it. You know, if you're gonna use it in a shop against the wall or something, you need to account for those bars that are hanging back there where this one, this one doesn't. I, I mean, I could have it right, right up against a wall right here if I wanted to. This is my shop saw, so this one doesn't go on site generally. And I bought it so it wouldn't have to be too far from the wall. Okay, so, Really, this is almost the same saw as that one, other than that the way it slides or, or, or uh, extends out there, and it's a size bigger. So it's, it's kind of all the same. A lot of these saws will have extendable bases, supports built right into them. So if you're, you know, you're cutting something that's three feet long, it'll balance on here better if you extend this this uh, extension out, this wing out, and most of them will have something on both sides. Uh, most of them, these fences will have adjustment as well. So this part of the fence can move. So for instance, when you're, when you're laying this saw over, if you have this fence right up here, the fence is actually in the way of the blade. So there's times when you need to get these fences back out of the way or move them in closer, whichever. Um, what else can I show you? There are other features, um, you know, like I said, the, the actual mechanisms for making these tilt and bevel can be a little different. So that's from saw to saw can be different. Most of the features are operational from out here. Some are only done from around on the back here. So just depending on uh, really the quality of the saw you have it just depends on how that's going to operate They're all going to have graduations in degrees along this 
curvature here for when you're mitering. So like if you're, if you're cutting baseboard, let's say at a 90 degree corner in your house, you're going to cut each side of the baseboard at a 45 degree angle. So it has markings all the way along here. And uh, I would say the majority of all the saws, actually when you push this, will lock in at some of the more used uh, degrees right away. They'll lock into that without having to line up the little gauge to it. Uh, for, the, for tilting the blade, again, we've got degrees back here with little markers that as you as you tilt the saw, and I don't know if you're even close enough to see that. Let me just move this ahead. I'll move this fence out of the way. So you can see back here, there's some degrees. And this little needle as I'm moving that, or not needle, but this marker, you can line up your degrees, lock your, lock your head in and, and you're good there. For most people, you really don't need that bevel function, honestly. Uh, a lot of a lot of basic DIYers aren't going to be making a compound angle cut and, and going to need to bevel the saw that way. But a lot of the saws now that they just automatically come with it. I don't even know if that's an option to not be able to do that anymore. Okay, and uh, if you can see here, I've got a just trying to spin this around so you can see. I've got a dust bag. Most of them will have some kind of dust bag dust collection. A lot of them don't work super great. Um, you could take the bag off and hook a vacuum. You can't really see the port on this one, but you could hook a vacuum right to it. That does help, but it's not always convenient to drag a vacuum around or like a shop vac. So that's kind of the, the basics on a more extravagant saw like this one. Uh, now, how I had said that sometimes you need to support your workpiece, so you're going to want to slide those in and out. This saw here, this one here, is mounted on a folding base, like this base here. So these arms on the base, let me just push this one out of the way, we're kind of done with it. So these arms extend out. I think this one, when both arms are out, is around 8 or 10 feet. So if you're cutting something that's eight feet long, it's nice to be able to rest it out here and be supported. You don't need to rig something else up here, or have somebody hold it. So a stand like this is, is nice to have. And this, uh, this stand folds up and it's portable. It's got wheels on it. You can port it, make it portable or move it, I should say, with the saw attached to it. Or you can actually undo the saw from the base Now that's something you should never do, is undo the saw from the base before you've got it all locked down. As you've seen there, it was pretty off balance. But I can take this saw right off of this base and carry it around or put it in the trailer or whatever. Fold the base up and wheel the base away. So just another, another way of having some, some supports when you're cutting something that's longer. Uh, that being said, also when you're moving these saws, they just about all, you're not gonna see it, but most of them will have a tag on them where, where there's grabbing points. You know, you don't wanna grab it by the motor and carry it around. You wanna grab where it's rated to be grabbed and has handles for carrying. A saw like this weighs, you know, 60 pounds. They aren't light to move around. Not only the weight, they're just awkward, so. So let's go back to this basic saw and we'll show you a little bit of cutting and, and just some, some basic uses of the saw. Okay, so we've come back to just the basic saw that really will do what most of you DIYers need to do. So this is a good entry level saw. If you're gonna do some baseboard, uh, you could cut smaller crown on this, you know, smaller trim work, that sort of thing, would all be able to be cut on here. I'm just gonna unplug the saw. Always a good idea to unplug the saw when you're doing anything here. So the nice thing about all these saws is they're going to have some kind of guard on them that raises and lowers as you're raising and lowering the blade. And it's just a safety feature so that as you raise the blade, 
it's protecting as much as it can your clothes and your hands and everything else from from the blade so they're all gonna nowadays they all basically have some kind of guard on the blade we already talked about the fences moving this fence on this side of this one doesn't move but that's because this saw only bevels one direction so there's really not any need to have to adjust that but just this this side a lot of them have onboard storage for the tools that you need for changing the blade I'm not going to really take the blade out but I'll just show you the basics here so most saws are going to have some kind of button now I've got the saw unplugged you always want to unplug it when you're working on the blade They've got some kind of button as a, as a shaft lock. I just gotta get a little better position here. And what that shaft lock does, if you raise the blade up, once you've got the saw unplugged, if you try pushing this button down until it locks in and it'll lock the blade tight. That then allows you to get your wrench on the arbor nut, which is right here. Now on most of these saws that have the guard, there's also going to be another screw up here to be able to flip this guard out of the way. Then you can get at the arbor nut. Loosen the arbor nut off, take your blade off, stick your blade back on, tighten it up, and then you can let go of that lock button. And that allows your blade to turn again. Uh, your blade, your teeth on the blade should always be, when you're looking at it from the open side, should always, the blade is going to turn clockwise. Okay, so your teeth are always going downward, not the other way around. You'll know pretty fast if you put your blade on backwards, it'll probably start smoking. There's all kinds of different teeth, that, amounts of teeth you can get on your blades. On a 10 inch blade for general purpose cutting, uh, you know, cutting some trims and stuff like that, for the most part you can probably get away with a 60 tooth blade. A lot of the saws will come with maybe a 40 or a 50 tooth, uh, sometimes well, usually now they're carbide, carbide teeth. So if you're going to get a new blade, I would get, you know, 60 to 80 teeth, carbide tooth, and uh, make sure that the blade is for cross-cutting or is labeled somehow for miter saws. So, okay. So that's kind of that part. And like I said, the, a lot of them, the tool for doing all that is on board. This one just happens to fit in the back. Okay, this one does have the dust bag like I mentioned before. There's a dust bag on this one back here. Okay, so that's all kind of main things that are on the saws. A lot of them are going to have safeties on the triggers. So you've kind of got a dual mechanism, uh, a safety switch you've got to flip before you can pull the trigger. This one's actually old enough it doesn't. It, it doesn't have an actual safety, it's just a trigger and it's on or off. On this saw, these red tabs up here are safety switches. So you've actually got to squeeze one of, either one of those before you can pull the main trigger, which is back here. So this saw won't, won't turn on. It's plugged in right now. It won't turn on unless I squeeze one of these at the same time. And usually, for most people, that's why there's one on each side for either right or left-handed people. Okay. So that's kind of the safety switch that this one doesn't have. More, more so just because it's a little bit older. I imagine the new version of this saw probably has it. Uh, should we maybe do some cutting? Show you some basic cutting. So I'm going to plug the saw back in. Now if you're running the saw, these saws on extension cords, it's a really good idea to use um, you know, probably, probably at least a 12 gauge cord, not your regular 16 or 14 gauge. 12 gauge would be great, especially if you're having to run uh, the cord any more than 20 feet or so. It's a good idea to have a little heavier cord because these, these motors take some juice. So, so I've got the saw plugged in. Uh, obviously, there's kind of a danger, so, uh, danger zone like on any saw, on this saw, uh, it's yellow in this in this yellow area is where I would keep my my hand out of because when that blade comes down it's going down into that groove in the middle so if you stay out of that yellow zone you're about an inch away from the blade at any time okay don't ever I shouldn't say ever <laughs> we're all guilty of it 
crossing our, our arms over and making a cut, sometimes you just do it. Try not to ever do that. Try to always have, you know, if, if your workpiece is out on this side, using your left hand to hold the workpiece and this side to use the saw. If you're working the other way, you know, you're using your other hands, right? As opposed to doing this where it's just awkward and there's more chance you're kind of pulling that blade down towards one of your arms that's crossing this, this cut zone. So just try to keep your hands orientated uh, correctly. A lot of these saws will come with a clamp that fits in somewhere on the base and you know will hold work, work pieces down. I find, well honestly, I don't use any of those clamps. They're all packed away in the shop somewhere in a box because it's just one other thing to drag around and gets lost and they don't function 100% the way they, they think they are designed to function. You're just, I find you're just better in 99% in of cases to hold your work piece solid on the, on the bed of the saw and back against the fence with your free hand while you've got your other hand to make the cut. Okay, again, keeping your fingers and arms and clothes and everything else out of the way. But if you want to use those clamps, that's fine. Where, where I'll use a clamp is if I'm going to do a bunch of repetitive cuts. You know, if I want to cut a bunch of pieces that are three inches long, I'll set up a stop that I can clamp with just any old uh, normal clamp that I have already. And I'll set a stop up on the saw. So now every, every piece that I cut here is repetitively the same, same size. When I make a cut like that, the other thing is to remember is that when you start the saw up and bring it down through the wood, you don't want to lift that blade back up while it's still spinning. You want to make the cut, let go of your trigger while holding the head of the saw down, let the blade stop before you raise the blade. What will happen is a few, you know, more times than won't, is if you lift that blade while the, while the, or lift the head of the saw while the blade's still running, the motion of that blade is going to catch this piece, one of these pieces, and flip it up. And it's usually shooting at you or going to hit you in the hand or whatever. So you want to wait for the blade to stop before you lift the blade. Um, with, with a stop like this, when I'm making repetitive cuts, can you see, you see how I have a little bit of a chamfer there, or a little bevel on the end of this board? The, the corner isn't square like it is up here. Is that better? You can see there's just a slight little bevel there. And that's so when I'm sliding my piece over, I make the cut, slide my next chunk over, make the cut. You're getting some sawdust buildup. And this little relief here allows the sawdust to go underneath and not just get stuck between this, the stop block and the piece you're cutting, which will change your measurement. So it just gives a place for loose sawdust to kind of go and get out of your way. And you still periodically got to, you know, give that a little blow or a wipe or whatever to empty it out. With this type of saw it's just a downward motion right because this one doesn't slide or move in and out from the fence so it's just down up down up right. Where these saws here you have this mo this movement in it. So with this type of saw what you're what you want to do is you want to start the saw like get the blade running bring it out to the edge of your work that you're holding down and then slowly move it into the work and then backwards. So you're, you're using the saw against its own fence to hold the piece in place. You don't want to, you want to try to avoid starting the saw, plunging in down here when you've got a big wide piece and then trying to bring the saw out this way to finish the cut. Because what can happen there is it can grab and start cutting and all of a sudden it jerks forward. And if you aren't ready for it or you got your finger in the wrong spot, you're going to lose a digit and you'll only be counting to four after that. So, so that's kind of the two differences here where this one, you don't have that motion. So you're just straight down, just chopping, right? You can't, you can't change that motion any. So, so let's make a, let's make a couple cuts with this saw and maybe I'll even do one with that just so you can see the sliding motion. But, uh, I've, I've just got a piece of one by, um, six here. So we're going to cut a piece off here on the saw just so you can kind of see what you're doing. Okay, so I've got my, my block on there just because I've got it there. You can, you can maybe see the gap there now a little easier. I don't know where that relief is for the sawdust. Okay, 
This, this bench is a little wobblier than I'd like to see. You want to work on a little more solid bench than that, but uh, we'll make it work. Now I'm holding my piece in place. Some people will argue, well, really, you should be holding this piece, right? Because it's, it's going to be eventually pinched between the blade and the, and the uh, block here. And that, that's a fair argument. Uh, the, the only problem with that is sometimes, you know, you're only cutting an inch off and I'm not putting my finger in there when that blade comes down. So if you generally stick to my rule of making sure the blade stops before you raise it, this piece here is, uh, should be fine in there. Okay, so let's make a cut. So now I've waited for the blade to stop turning. Now I can safely lift it and I've got my piece. Okay. Something to consider is when you start the saw up, don't just pull the trigger and slam it down. Pull the trigger, let the saw get fully up to speed. And the, once you get to know your saw, you'll know what speed you can, you can drop that blade through there at. But I mean, you, you need it to cut. You don't want it just to rip at the wood. So it's, you gotta go slow enough that it's actually cutting. So on a saw like this, let's get it out here a little bit more where you can see. This one's plugged in. So let's, uh, let's just cut a bit of an angle on the end of this board. So let's just pick uh, 10 degrees. So I'm gonna set my gauge over here at 10 degrees. On this one, because 10 degrees isn't one where it locks in, I've gotta tighten this handle to kind of clamp it into place so that it can't move anymore. Okay, and I, I could have a pencil mark there or whatever I'm going by. Now, if, let's just say you had a pencil mark. So let's say I want the end of my cut to, to start at that, at that point there. So I've got my pencil mark on the wood. Now without turning the saw on and keeping my hands still back safely, I can lower that blade down, sliding, kind of sliding my wood back and forth until I get my pencil mark lined up where I want. Now I use my hand to hold that wood nice and solid there so it isn't gonna move since I've got it lined up. Now I can make my cut. So I'm gonna start the saw. I'm gonna bring it out to about where the middle of the blade is going to contact this this outer edge of my of my workpiece. Again, I just wait for the blade to stop before I raise it. Like I said, if you a lot of times if you raise that blade while it's still spinning, this loose piece of yarn hanging on to does that and you're lucky if it just goes back there and it doesn't hit you or at, at the very least startle you, make you jump. So. so I think that's the basic stuff I can kind of show you with the miter saw. Um, if you're using that bevel feature, there's times where you might have the wood standing up like this against the fence. Depends what you're kind of cutting. And that, that's fine. There's no, no issue with that. Uh, I always try to, as much as I can, make my cuts using the, the width of the bed, just because it's a little more stable. Some of the saws don't have very high fences over here, so when you stand something up high, it gets a little rocky, so it's always safer to be laying down if you can. So I think that kind of gives you the basic walkthrough on, on three different saws, you know, kind of their basic functions, why they function that way, and how to safely use them. Hopefully you found it uh, helpful, and you can improve your use of your miter saw around the, your projects and uh, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below even if you want, if maybe you know a little secret that uh, I haven't mentioned here and I know there's a bunch of other ones and that all just comes with time but uh, I tried to just give you the basics so thumbs up and uh, su subscribe to the channel, comment below.